These are examples of Cornu aspersum, the common garden snail. It used to be known as Helix aspersa. The pattern is like a spiral patterning with broken sections in between. It can be quite variable, as you can see here. They take a couple of years to mature. In the past, Helix aspersa, Cornu aspersum, was found mainly close to the sea in cold areas, such as in Scotland. But over the last few years, they've spread inland and now are very common for considerable distances away from the sea. So the sea provided a moderate climate for them. They are capable of altering their osmotic balance to be able to withstand at least minus five degrees Celsius. But it seems that the mild winters have allowed them to spread much further inland. They are edible. In fact, they're known as Mendip wallfish in some parts of the country, that is, um, in England. So they were commonly eaten. In fact, uh, they've been introduced into every continent on the planet, apart from Antarctica, because they are regarded as a, as a delicacy. In parts of France, for instance, uh, there are even uh, annual events, annual celebrations, where all they're basically doing is eating various gourmet dishes of this snail. It's quite easily told apart from the brown-lipped hedge snail, which has got uh, a variable sorts of bandings on its shell, but it's much smaller. And the other more famous, in terms of France perhaps, eating snails, is the Roman snail, Helix pomatia, which again is larger than, than these are. These, of course, are a terrible garden pest. One of the best ways of uh, getting rid of them is by using... Um, coffee grinds, they seem to hate the caffeine. And you can also use uh, copper strips at the base of plants you want to protect. They're unable to, to move over it. This is the head foot structure of the snail. Now it is a mollusk, a terrestrial mollusk, and therefore it does take in air from the atmosphere. And you can see this little hole just at the top, which is opening and closing very slowly. So that's controlling the input of air into the lungs of the snail. The covering of the snail is called the periostracum, and it's a protein, complex protein, which is actually very important in the formation of the shell. It helps to control um, the way in which the uh, calcium salts are laid down to form the calcium of the shell. The mouth parts of this organism are most extraordinary. They're called a radula, and they look so much like a chainsaw that you think it's been modelled on it. Essentially, this chainsaw-like structure moves back and forth, cutting through almost anything in terms of plants. They're not at all fussy in their diet. And as the teeth on this radula wear down, new ones grow to replace it. But muscles, of course, are pulling it back and forth all the time. These garden snails have two sets of tentacles, which can be pulled back in or can be pumped out hydraulically using their body fluids. The upper pair have light-sensitive cells at the tip. The lower pair, much more to do with taste and feel. Another habit of this snail is that producing mucus and froth is not just to deter animals from, from attacking it, but also is used in times of dry weather or over the winter as a form of plug. They lack the sort of um, operculum, that is the hard shield-like covering that other mollusks have, particularly marine ones. But this uh, dried mucus plug is enough to help prevent other creatures from entering, such as ants and so on, and also is perfectly capable of allowing oxygen and carbon dioxide to pass through. 
Here's an example of the brown-lipped hedge snail, Sepia nevaralis, for comparison. The hedge snail is very variable indeed. The number of rings that it has, or it may have none whatsoever, and the colour can go from a sort of goldish right the way through to pink. Much more variable than the garden snail. When it comes to reproduction, garden snails are unusual, at least it seems that way to us, because they are a hermaphrodite, that is both male and female at the same time. However, they don't self-fertilise, they cross-fertilise. One of the oddities that they have is to aid this cross-fertilisation, they have a what they call love darts. These are what look like arrowheads made of calcium, which they fire into each other during the process. The result are these white, small, round eggs, which you'll frequently find beneath stones and other damp places. And they will hatch out, and within two years, you'll have your fully grown, mature garden snail.